All right, major stone shield potions should be... Oh, God, I'm gonna have diarrhea again. Uh, uh... You can't go to the bathroom, you're stacking Sunder armor. It's okay. Ma'am, bathroom! What, hon? Bathroom! Bathroom! Oh, that's a big boy, isn't he? All right, Kenny, drink your elixir of the mongoose. I'm now going to use Mocking Blow. Traveling to Japan, I realize that this place, this USA we're always chatting about, is a filthy and disgusting place. <laughs> we were in Japan for seven days. Not only did I not encounter a single dirty bathroom, the bathrooms in Tokyo and Kyoto are cleaner than our operating rooms here. <laughs> Everywhere you go, the bathrooms are clean, they don't smell bad, they have those toilets that wash you from the inside out. <laughs> okay, how much? A woman named Patricia Silva took a photo of a trans person in there as a guy pretending to be a gal, shaving his face. That was our first clue. Planet Fitness is defending the man in the women's locker room, the man with the penis, rather than the child sitting in the corner with a towel wrapped around her. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? I love the young people. I just so don't you see. can't have an opinion on your platform that is not pro a country that is not ours. Hmm. Yeah. Wait a minute. It's crazy. I wish. So wait, is I the Daily Wire an American media platform or is it an Israeli Ooh. media platform? <laughs> I'm just asking. This guy's cooking. It's now spun into a debate about whether the Daily Wire is pro free speech. Uh, the accusation is you are until it comes to Israel. How do you respond? I mean, what I will say is that we have a wide variety of positions on Israel right now inside the Daily Wire. Matt Walsh, obviously, is another one of the hosts at the Daily Wire. He and I wildly disagree about what America's Israel policy should be. Matt is much more isolationist. He basically believes the United States has no no real interests in the Middle East, and thus the United States should not be providing material support to anyone, including the state of Israel. You know, Matt obviously is well within you know the, the the sort of group of hosts that we have here at the Daily Wire. So clearly, whatever is going on is not about. Israel specifically. Now speaking, Horcio Gutierrez, senior executive vice president. I didn't even get to finish his name. Good actually, morning. Though. Sorry, it's, it's playing. Okay. Patient advocate for Do No Harm, the group that seeks accountability in the medical profession. I am presenting proposal number seven titled "Report on Gender Transitioning Compensation and Benefits," sponsored by what? National Legal and Policy Center. Disney pays for gender transition intervention. This is how they started. What? Therefore, what? Oh. Discriminates based on gender identity under EEOC regulation. Few moments later. Pause. Share this. What? Go look up. Uh, Disney stock just dropped. <laughs> oh no! After no, Ooh, how bad? Sure. Usually oh, not. Oh my god. Yeah. Within. 13 minutes within 13 minutes yeah that's eastern yeah. time so uh uh-oh uh-oh pescadios
piece of, of your appearance on Bill Maher's show. Yeah. I'm a, a, a clean and sober guy. Like, it's very important that I maintain my sobriety. How long, how long have you been? Uh, approaching 16 years. They, 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 you know, his thing is he smokes pot the whole time while he interviews people. And, and I, I said, hey, I'd happily go on there, but, but could he, while I'm on, out of respect for my sobriety, could he refrain from smoking he pot? He said no. He said no, that's a deal breaker. I love you. And, and so high right, right now. Wow. I saw the news when you did. I wasn't going to make a video about it. The main thing is to protect these characters, make sure that they still continue to, to live in the way that you created them. Uh, excuse me, I believe I asked you to put a chick in this and make her gay. Absolute, complete insanity. And the idea that some of us think we're really great people, but in the real world we're not. Or terrible people. Stupid decision after stupid decision after stupid decision. Yeah, put a chicken in, make a gang. Or you well, can you make bad choices. Well, you make uh, bad choices, but you run your life in a very selfish way, and you think you're doing good when you're actually not. You'd better put a chicken in and make it f***ing gay as f At the same time, those people who may not play by the rules because they're selfish and greedy turn themselves into evil people who don't care about other people. Look, I don't want to have to say it, but I think the problem is Kathleen Kennedy. There you go. <laughs> if you like the ballet, check out the girls' introduction to ballet class with Planet Fitness. Entrance for all girls guaranteed. Must be over six feet and 200 pounds to enter. What is that? Planet Fitness, where men make the best women. For some people, the world has never been more divided. Here at Starbucks, we serve the community by bringing people together. Look, there's a black lady helping an old white lady to cross the street. Through our large windows, we see humanity for what it can be. This holiday season, come and view things the way we do. Starbucks, a little kindness goes a long way. 10% of all proceeds go to Hamas. Elrond, join me in the game of I Have Seen. No, not again. Oh, come on, don't be a sport sport. You always cheat, I'm not doing it. Oh, come on, Elrond. Oh, go on then. Oh, good. I'll go first. Of course you will. I have seen something beginning with B. Beach. Nope. Uh, bushes. Nope. Uh, boats. No. Nope. You're doing it again, aren't you? I don't know what you mean. Okay, tell me. <laughs> Come on, tell me what you've seen. Balrog. Are you having a laugh? It's got to be something that's here. No, it doesn't. I have seen the Balrog many years ago. You are not playing fair, Galadriel. I don't have to play fair because I'm a woman. Now shut your face. 
Besides, I'm the most powerful elf. I can do what I want. Galadriel, you are 5,000 years old. If I've got to guess something that you've seen in your entire life, beginning with B, this will take weeks. Oh, you're just a sore loser. Right. Let's see how you like it. I have seen something beginning with I. Um, it's Theodore. Oh, you lucky cow. Jones, how are you? Jeremy, I love the quartering. I love Salty Cracker. I love it uh, all. Salty Cracker, how are you? Boy, that just sounds crazy. I can't believe I'm joined by the Roseanne Bar. I'm so glad. You're very welcome. Nice to be here. Who is Jeremy and what is the quartering? Well, I'm a commentator, I guess. I'm a Midwestern dude who uploads four to five videos a day covering everything from big tech to YouTube, to technology, to pop culture, movies, video games, whatever's going on in the world, I've got you covered. We're still on YouTube right now. <laughs> uh, but I just decided to just quadruple down in the face of losing nearly $30 billion. Reimagine, I'm sorry, again, I missed it again. I'm out of practice. Reimagining. They are literally trying to put a content creator in prison uh, for their opinions. You're gonna find interviews on my channel, you're gonna find deep dives, you're gonna find breaking news, you're gonna find long-term coverage. Everything you need to stay in touch, you're gonna find on The Quartering. If you're watching this video, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. I really think you're gonna find one or two videos a day that you really enjoy. Hello. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? Good, good. I, I finished my taxes last minute. So, okay. Well, nine days early, basically. So, I mean, <laughs> I you... feel great. It's like, okay, all of that is off my shoulders now. <laughs> yeah. That, that I always wait. Now I do extensions every year. So, I end mm -hmm. up not having to do them till like October or something like That's that. That's smart. I should have done that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's fine. But then, you know, if you extend till October, then it still gets to, then it like looms over you all summer long. Right. So it's not That's like, true. it's not as awesome as uh, it might seem. But um, yeah, how, how's your day going otherwise? I mean, your taxes are done. That's obviously a big <laughs> W. You know, that seems yeah. Good. So now I'm good. Now, you know, I just got ready for this. It's like, I can focus on on my normal stuff that I'm supposed to focus on. Uh, and yeah. also getting my tar car tuned up. <laughs> oh, you gotta get your IRL car stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Car tuned up, registration renewed, adulting. Yeah, it's annoying when real life uh, interrupts things, in particular when you have to I like know. go somewhere and run an errand or deal with like bureaucracy, like the DMV or I hate it. Even getting like emissions done, I'm like, oh, crap. I know that's what's a pain in the butt. It's like if I get my registration renewed, why do I have to get emissions done every single year? <laughs> yeah, just charge me the money or whatever. Actually, no, they don't charge you, right? They pay the at least where I live, they pay, you don't pay anything, but you have to still go. And it's yeah. like, it, 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 if it's it, especially if it's like a newer car, like it's it's stupid that I have to keep going every year. But yeah, such is life. <laughs> Lots going on today. Um. Well, actually, this week's been kind of quiet 
earlier today, there was uh, another perv in um, Planet Fitness. Um, really? Again? This guy went in there fully nude <gasps> and um, was asking women to put uh, lotion on him. What? And, yeah. And then when the some woman in there asked, uh, like, what, what's, what are you doing in here? He simply replied, oh, I'm trans. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I would be creeped out if in another woman was like, here, rub lotion on me. I yeah. especially would be creeped out if a man did that. Yeah. By, by the oh way, he's my. fully nude while he's doing oh. this. And they're like in the showers. And like I, I was talking about this one. I was like, oh, look, that thing that totally never happened happened yeah. again. Like it just wow. happened. It also happened back in October. Some dude, mm -hmm. you know, was going in there and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm trans. And then like just perving on women. It's curious that it never goes the other way. You don't exactly. see like. Exactly. <laughs> it's just like the sports thing. Like, hmm, I wonder why it's no women are walking into the men's room and being like, hey, I just do this so I'm more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Like for some reason, it's always men. Yeah, uh, and sure enough, all these, all the feminists are supporting it. <laughs> it's yeah, stupid. Yeah, it's 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 like a we live in a bizarro world. Remdog, you don't file quarterly. I pay in quarterly. I do not file quarterly. Um, the yeah, I pay taxes quarterly and monthly and yearly. It's great. I love it. Mm. I love. And then they just give my money to Ukraine and Israel and right. college kids. <laughs> And college kids that took out loans that they couldn't buy that they couldn't support <laughs> it's great you know i busted my ass i worked two jobs to pay off my student loan cool uh i don't get any money i guess i should have been irresponsible and not paid i it. know i paid off my student loans it's like everybody else who who can't it's like oh they expect all these handouts it's 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 the craziest okay. thing i've ever seen and and to make it even worse they Pay, they're gonna it's not student loan forgiveness first of all it gets passed on everyone else and then the government's gonna print all this money to do it and then what they didn't reform it so they're just every new every new right. year in college they're gonna be another round of eight dumbass 18 year olds taking out too much college i remember when i was in college i knew it was stupid like mm -hmm. when i was um when i was doing my master's degree i got something like $16,000 per semester. And the semester cost was like eight or 9,000. Uh -huh. Like, I'm like, why are they giving me all this extra money? Yeah. Like, you're like, you're a kid, you know, like you're, you're thinking, okay, well, wow. $8,000. That's pretty nice. Pay off my credit cards. Like they shouldn't be giving you extra money, mm -mm. but like, that's the way it's just the system is you guys should talk to Misha Petrov sometime. I don't know who that is. I don't need I don't mean to be disrespectful. I just I don't know who that yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. I don't um we're definitely down to talk to people. Let me see. Let me it's are they a content creator? I use Brave Browser and their search sucks. Oh, really? Um, <laughs> yeah. Like I always like I open Brave, it goes to Brave Search, and I'm like, okay. And I always end up having to go to Google. Oh, she's a YouTuber, looks like. Uh not a small YouTuber, like four hundred thousand subscribers. Oh, wow. Okay. See, this world is, I just subscribed. I'll check her out. Um, wait a second. Misha Petrov. Um, is that the, is that the person that did Benny Johnson math? Oh no, it isn't. But right. she's just doing the, the same archetype, the conservative gr grind, short reactions. Okay. Good looking girl in the thumbnail. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we'll talk to her. Um, yeah. So Got some some appearances next week. It shouldn't uh, affect the show, but mm -hmm. I do want to let people know that tomorrow I'm going to go live at the old time, not because I'm switching it, but because I have to travel. And so tomorrow is also my birthday. No big deal. Oh, yay. So, <laughs> so I have dinner plans. Uh, and then because I've been doing the intermittent fasting, mm -hmm. like, I take the first reservation because it's already like normally I'm done eating at three thirty, so I'm like, I can't go to dinner at like seven o'clock. It'll totally like if I get off track, it'll be 
you know, it's really hard for me to get back on track. Oh, for so, sure. So I'm like, well, I'll go out to dinner, but I have to eat it like when they open, which is like at five o'clock. So, uh-huh. um, which is when we're normally live. So tomorrow I'll be soloing it. Uh, like I do anyway on Fridays, but, uh, we'll be live at, when did I used to go live to one thirty Eastern? No, I one Eastern s- noon. Something like noon that. Central. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, so let's talk about some of the stuff going on out there. By the way, if you're just tuning in, people are trickling in over on rumble, um, and YouTube, by the way, if you're watching on I'll do the spiel. Let me share this. I'm joined by Melanie Mack. She's on as a co-host on Tuesdays and Thursdays consistently, but she also creates her own content. If you're watching on Rumble, please go subscribe to her channel if you enjoy her content, that is, or if you want to just be supportive, that's also cool. Um, It's linked in the description, and I'll also put it in chat. It's just Melanie Mack, M-E-L-O-N-I-E-M-A-C as one word. Um, If you're on YouTube, she has a channel called Melanie Mac Go Boom. She has many channels, but we'll just yeah. call this one. <laughs> and uh, you should go subscribe to that. And uh, I thought your Lara Croft video did well. The last yeah. two videos actually did pretty good. The last few videos have been doing great. So I'm stoked about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually true. The IGN France one, these have been popping off because your, yeah. your average is normally like 30 to 50K. So I've seen a Yeah. Off. That's obviously because you've been on this show. But the, of course, um, yeah. <laughs> you but, know, and also it was the the getting canceled by Kotaku that helped. <laughs> oh yeah, that was nice. Yeah, because yeah, that's always great. All kinds of people were making videos about it. I didn't even do that. I was like, oh, I don't really, I don't want to grift on it. And yeah. but all kinds of other channels were making videos about it, and I think it just like boosted me in the YouTube algorithm because then they all started getting suggested videos about me because my name was in the titles that they were already clicking on from other people so love it yeah yeah the um so if if you if you enjoy her content please do follow her and then her twitter's also linked that's also at melanie mac if you're watching on the midwestly channel please move over to the quarter cast channel if you just i'll link it in the uh midwestly channel i'm deleting that channel at the end of the week so please do do that um, before, before it's too late. Um, I thought let's start with, okay, let's start with this story because it really stinks when like I, I try, especially now as I'm getting older, like Mm -hmm. I really like, I don't care if some Hollywood, you know, weirdo is you know, a Democrat or like even a liberal. That doesn't bother me. It's not, it doesn't bother me that this guy who's, you know, in Reacher, which is like actually a good show or a decent show. I haven't watched the latest season, but, um, and like, sure enough, he comes out and he's got Trump derangement syndrome and he's like, Oh, I'm uh, baffled at the religious support for Donald Trump. He's a he's they called him a uh, the the R word, this which mm. is obviously not true, not correct. Right. Um, you might call him a con man that 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 I'll allow. Um, <laughs> but then, you know, you go and you say like, and he says, and yet the entire Christian church treats him like he's their poster child. I First of all, I don't necessarily know if that's true. Um, I I wouldn't say that's true. I do yeah. think that there are some people who are are just very 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 they love Trump a lot, but I don't I don't think it's safe to say that the Christian community is making him their poster child. Yeah. And I don't I don't think there's anything wrong with people liking Trump. I like Trump. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean there's nothing wrong with it, but like I mean, if you really dig deep into it, I mean, if you go, you talk about churches that are like very like Catholic or um, very strong, like, I mean, he is not as strong as some Catholics or Christians would want on abortion. Right. Um, I agree. Stuff like that. So it's not like he's, so it's like, come on, dude. Like why? I like this show. No, every time I see it, it's like, great. Mm. I think the bigger issue is churches, a lot of churches that have conformed to current ideology and have pride flags in their churches or on their signs. It's like, isn't that the bigger issue here? I have not seen any church that's had MAGA 
on it anywhere or anything like that. So it's oh like, right, yeah, that's is a good he point. Making this up? <laughs> yeah, I've definitely seen churches with pride flags. I know yeah. that the church, like my uncle, is very religious. He changed churches because they started like not just like I'll you know we may differ on this. Maybe I'll agree with you as I get further in the Bible, mm -hmm. but like I uh, I don't care if the church isn't like making a sermon every week about how gays are going to hell or something like that. But I do care if they're like promoting it. If they're right. like, you know, they have flags up, they have sermons about it and they have like pride, whatever is like, that is very common in the West. And mm -hmm. it's very, very odd, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm I with don't... you on that. And I think that, um, I think that people who are in these lifestyles should still, I mean, if they're going to church, maybe they can learn something. And I actually got in a debate with someone on Twitter not long ago about this because Blair White was saying that they were going to go to church. And I was like, this is great. And pe someone was, some people are actually mad about it. And I'm like, yeah. how are you mad about it? Because obviously I don't condone the transgender uh, stuff, but going to church is a great first step. And what if they get saved out of this? You know, that's my mindset about it. And I think some people expect people to clean themselves up and to be perfect before going to church, but it's Jesus Christ who cleans us up. So you right. can't accept, expect somebody to already be right and be perfect before accepting Jesus. That's a process. So I definitely think that that anybody who identifies in the LGBT community should be welcome in church, but it shouldn't be condoned. And uh, it should be uh, encouraged that they find Jesus and turn from it. Well, what's interesting, that that wasn't actually on my list to talk about, but here's a perfect example of what you're talking about. Yes. I, I made a video about this earlier today that nobody watched, so I ended up deleting it. Um, because I think... So have you seen this chick floating around? I have. Okay. Okay. So, so I can set it up for people um, and then get your take. Essentially, her whole shtick is I made $9 million selling pictures of my b-hole on the internet. And now, you know, I'm a pastor's daughter and I found God again. That's like the, to the TLDR of it. And mm -hmm. Obviously, and I think with fair reason, people are skeptical and they're like, oh, she's just moving the grift, this, that, and the other thing. My reaction to it, and I want to get yours too, is not trying to poison the well here, but my reaction is like, yeah, I'm suspicious too. Right. But also like, first of all, let's think about it logically. If she really made $9 million selling pictures of her b-hole on the internet, she doesn't really need another grift. Um, I know that's <laughs> my take on it. People are like, oh, she's doing a Christian grift. I will tell you there is less money to be made in content creation unless you happen to be one of these mega churches, Joel Osteen churches, which yeah. is super rare. There is no way she would make remotely the amount of money of grifting Christianity as she would continuing OnlyFans. So to me, it makes no sense to call that a grift. Yeah. Uh, from what I've seen, she met a Christian man and yeah. he started sending her Bible verses and things like that. She already grew up in a Christian family. So none of this is anything new that she's hearing. And I mean, even the Bible tells us that if you are raised in, if you are raised with the truth and the faith, um, you'll come back to it. Happened mm. to me as well. Cause I parted from it for a bit. Um, so this is all biblical stuff. So it's not, it shouldn't be a huge surprise that she did come back to the faith. Um, and I get how people can be a little skeptical and say, okay, well, you know, we'll see soon enough, but, um, but to just assume it's a grift and to not look at something like this and say, Hey, if this is true, this is a great thing. We yeah. should want to see more of this because what else are we going to do? Put people in a position to where it's lose, lose, where it's like, Oh, you're doing this, this, you're being an online prostitute. There is no hope for you. You are donezo forever. No, no redemption to be had. That's just not a good message to send people. And it's, it's literally, yeah, yeah, it's kind of like the opposite 
of the Christianity's core it tenet, is. you know, and yeah. like what I will say is, you know, and what I will criticize is first of all, people are a hundred percent like justified to be skeptical. I agree. How, second of all, um, I do think there's some room for criticism if she's going to like be clickbaiting God, right? Like that's yeah. a little slimy and she has kind of been doing that. So I think if that, if that's your criticism, th then I think that that's, that's fair. I think it's tough for people because some people want, expect her to just go quiet and never be on the internet again. And, oh, just go be a Christian in private. But that also is against the Bible. We're supposed to proclaim supposed the gospel. Proclaim. Yeah. 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 And, and what a better way to do it than somebody who already has an audience. And so, um, yeah, there is a lot of people who can misunderstand that again. I think we'll, we'll see time will tell, but at the end of the day, um, uh, she is sharing the gospel right now. What I've personally heard her say about it. She understands salvation. She understands the gospel. Um, so I personally haven't seen anything that would make me think, uh, substantial that would make me think for sure that this isn't genuine. Yeah. I think people has someone in chat said, um, that God has to forgive her. I don't, that's fair. Um, and I'm not telling people to do that. And people get really defensive around like, Hey, maybe this e-girl's not it, doing this for clout, but like, Hey, if she is really, what have you lost? Uh, right. But <laughs> also know? it's just like, why do they need to forgive her? What did she do to them? That's why I don't understand. Well, what people say yeah. That. Yeah. That's fair too. But even so the Bible says, if you can't forgive others, God won't forgive you. So that's another thing. I think oh, that get Bibled. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I think that, yeah, for sure. We shouldn't just easily fall for false prophets and stuff because the Bible speaks about that. There will be a lot of them. Um, so go ahead, be skeptical, make sure you're paying attention to her fruit. That's important. We're supposed to test the spirits, but to automatically write her off and, and to say she can't be redeemed, she can't be saved. I think that's unreasonable. Yeah, I think I'm, I tried to, I agree with you. My position is, I, hey, you don't have to worship this chick. Yeah. You don't have to share her stuff. You don't have to follow her on Instagram. I think that it is an unrealistic demand. The two biggest criticisms I've seen that I'm, that I try to push back gently against is that first of all, people are, people are like, well, did she give all her money away? That's not a requirement. It's not. Um, and then like, how come she didn't just log off the internet and delete her entire presence? Why? That's also not a requirement mm -hmm. of be, of joining the church or being saved. And, yep. and um, I, I get it. It feels slimy, but you know, keep that same energy for Joel Olstein or a lot of these other people that enrich themselves off the church. Um, and again, I also think, you know, the right uh, like the traditional, right? Like daily wire, for example, uh -huh. they shouldn't be trotting this woman out there. Like the new spokeswoman of Christianity. Right. I think that's stupid, like, mm -hmm. um, and worth criticizing. It's like, okay, cool. Get, you know, start your Bible versus channel and, you know, and then go away for six months and then we'll, we'll talk. Um, you know, I think I understand, I think the money thing, the richness thing, bothers people. I understand that. Obviously the thoughtery, you know, prostitution bothers people. I understand that. But I, I, my position was, and I guess it was kind of not like, you know, it's not like people were mad about my video or like not right. you know, agreeing, but it's like my, my whole position is that like, maybe let's not like be a hundred percent, like maybe we just yeah. don't have to react. We don't have to. That too. Yeah. That too. Is there any substantial reason that has she given anything significantly substantial to say, this is fake. This isn't genuine right now. I personally don't think that's the case. And, and yes, she has done terrible things in the past, but, but look at people in the Bible, like Paul, who was literally a murderer. He killed yeah. Christians. Um, you have Rahab. God has, has, has saved and it, prostitutes before in the right. Bible. In the so Bible, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this isn't something that's different. This isn't something that's not happened before. This is this is something that we've seen in the Bible, and this is something we should want to see from other girls who were in this prostitution in that circle. Yeah, don't you want people to stop being an only yes. fans? I I try to say like 
I, I put in this tweet. I said, I, th I think, you know, I happen to think leaving whoring is a good thing. Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, like, you know, if look, if she starts coming out with 49 95 private, you know, Bible testimonial classes, right. If she like monetizes this. I'm right there with everybody. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a new grift, this, that, and the other thing. But I don't think that Christianity is necessarily the, the best choice for, for like <laughs> financial grifting. It wouldn't. You know? She would make a lot more continuing OnlyFans for sure. Yeah. If she really was making 9 million or if she said she grossed 9 million, there's like, I think part of that, what I, what I meant to say without accusing people is like, if the headline wasn't, I made $9 million on OnlyFans and now I found God. If it was something like, I used to, I used to be a prostitute and now I found God, people wouldn't blink an eye. Right. But people are like, oh, you have a bunch of money. So now but you're they not also authentic. might not click on it as much. I know. That's I've, another yeah, thing yeah. is when it comes to these outlets sharing these stories or even what we do on YouTube, yeah. headline, you got to have a good headline to get clicks. That's part of it. Um, and in this case, she didn't choose the headlines at these places that interviewed her uh, right. are saying, but also these outlets, they, they want to get clicks. They want to generate attention just like I do on any of my videos. And I me too. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and I don't think that, and I just think, I think that if, if, if my, if we can agree, like, Hey, let's not, you know, anoint this person. Right. But you know, and if she's still out there on this grift for two months from now doing interviews and, and still clout gobbling. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll think a little different of her, but you know, it's not, you know, somebody called to interview her. Was she supposed to say, well, I'm not going to interview because people will think I'm not being authentic. Like I'm not, I think that it's a good story. And, it's good and, to share. People need to see it. And and yeah. I made a post about this the other day too, because it's like uh, a lot of times people are seeing me on my platforms talk about uh, talk about sin. How hey, prostitution's wrong, fornication's wrong, homosexuality, transsexuality, all of that. And I speak out against that. But it's also important to know that that there is redemption. That people who are stuck in any of these sins or anything else they can get out of it with through Jesus Christ. And here's a perfect example of that. So I think it's wonderful that her story is gaining traction if it's actually genuine. And personally right now, I'm, it, it appears to be genuine. To I'm me. leaning towards it being genuine because yeah. she's still popular. She has like a million Instagram followers. Literally she could still be selling pictures of her butthole and making a lot of money still. Right. And so it's not like she's irrelevant. It's not like she's, um, Mia Khalifa, who's now like, you know, exactly. you know, resurfacing <laughs> and trying to rebrand herself. So, you know, I think it's still a, it's a good, like, I'm not going to follow her on social media just because of this and you right. shouldn't be, and people shouldn't right. either. I don't take her opinions on Christianity. I don't care what she has to say about it, but at the same time, like, I'm not going to be spending all day. Like there are certain content creators that have been spending like days, like trying to debunk this and be like, oh, she's still selling pictures, even though she isn't. Right. And like, it's like, dude, just maybe just let her. I said this in my video and I wanted to like, as somebody who is Christ curious right now, mm -hmm. it puts me off when I see people say like, yeah, you know, like when they're attacking her and yep. being like, oh, this is just a griff. We don't want you. You're not a real Christian. All this yep. is like. You probably shouldn't gatekeep Christianity. Exactly. And, None and of us deserve salvation. That's the thing these people need to understand is we've all sinned against God. None of us deserve salvation. And we we should be very grateful to have that. Um, so that's definitely not something we should be gatekeeping from others. Yeah. If she's a grifter, you know, I would assume that things will work themselves out. Mm -hmm. You know, like oh, I would yeah. assume things will work themselves out. I just, I see the feminist misogynist in chat. I think I follow you on Twitter. Um, if I feel like I do, um, anyway. Yeah. And you know, people want to say, you know, don't simp or whatever, blah, 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 blah. Look, I'm not saying you gotta like her. You can call her a whore all you want. I'm not saying that she's not a whore or wasn't a whore, but I'm saying, Hey, the people on the right shouldn't probably be anointing her and people who are Christian probably shouldn't be spending a lot of energy going out of their way to try and debunk her, at least until she right. starts her one-on-one -on -one Bible study class as she starts to charge people for it. Then it's open season. Right.
the um okay so there's yeah that was a tangent but um you kind of brought up something that I was on my mind I want to give a mention here to uh Disco Cobra absolutely massive um wrote I was skeptical of Nala at first uh, but after the interview she gave on Daily Wire I think she's legit Pearl is a grifter herself she's always trying to start drama or farm content I would put money that she's legit nine million on OnlyFans is uh she's fine on money that's my thing i agree i agree like, that's money is like now clout is not the same thing as money right so she could you know you could argue oh she was losing interest or losing fans and she thought hey this will get a bunch of eyeballs on me okay okay if that's true it's true and um really what have we lost if you don't give her your money and you don't give her your time you lose nothing um uh, you also can the also disco continues at bible thumping is a derogatory term. Uh, only people who try to push their beliefs are Bible thumpers. Mel and others do not force their beliefs, so stop saying Bible thumpers. We are allowed to speak openly about the Bible. Oh, people in chat, maybe. Thank you, um, Disco Cobra. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm just saying, you know, again, I'm not, you know, I'm not where M Melanie is. And maybe I never will be. But I just think, like, for a religion that is the only religion on earth that is allowed to be mocked openly, uh, by everybody else. I mean, you just had Rihanna posing yes. as a nun and people are talking about blasphemy. It's like, dude, try that with a hijab once. Yep. Try that shit with a hijab, Rihanna, and see. Because mm -hmm. I bet you won't. I yep. bet you won't. I bet you won't blaspheme against Muhammad. Yep. And um, so I just think it makes Christians... You know, I understand being skeptical, but going out of your way to try and like shit on what is probably one of the most like for our generation one of the yeah. best redemption possibilities yeah that we've seen in a long time uh I, I just don't see a lot of energy uh i don't see a lot of value in screwing that up i agree the by the way if you're in i want to mention people uh if you're in the chat um if you're on rumble steadily climbing climbing to about three thousand there if you haven't yet Please, if you enjoy my co-host commentary, she is also on Rumble at Melanie Mack. Make sure you follow her. She's at 6.3132 thousand subscribers there. And then if you're on YouTube, please do uh, check out her Melanie Mack Go Boom. That is linked in the description. And her Twitter is at Melanie Mack, of course. Also, um, I think that uh, somebody in chat said there's a lot of, say, questionable material out there that involves nuns uh yes yes there <laughs> yeah, is there <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes there's there some is. cool anime stuff with nuns though <laughs> yeah. yeah there's none yeah. vampire slayers that's cool i would watch that i think <laughs> yeah, yeah I, think, I think that's I, awesome <laughs> yeah that i don't i don't hate that the um the like i for me when you see the Rihanna album cover, I don't care about that. I don't think it, it doesn't bother me personally, but I do. It's the hypocrisy yeah. that bothers me. Like I know damn well, she ain't doing that to any other religion exactly. um, other than Christianity, which is the only that that's the part that bothers me. You know, like mm -hmm. if I would have actually given her credit, if she had done it <laughs> like her, you know, had mocked Muhammad <laughs> yeah. or something like, okay, like, <laughs> It's safe to make fun of Christians. Let's like it's safe yep. to make fun of white people, really, in general. That's true. Women used to be a little bit protected, but not white women anymore. You're part right. of the problem. I am. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if you saw this news today. Um, this was, let me grab this. Actually, let me do a shorter one first because this is another kind of heavy topic. Let's look at this one. Yeah. Um, did you see this video going around? Yay. Yeah. So um, let me write this down. I always like to notate um, when we start talking about something for clip mm -hmm. purposes. A Texas middle school teacher, just want to say middle school teacher, so that I, depending on where you are, mm -hmm. fifth, sixth, seventh grade, sometimes it's just what, fifth and sixth. It depends. Um, but you're talking about people who are, how old are you in middle school? Probably. When you know you're like, like I was ten, homeschooled. Ten, ten, so 11, that explains a lot. It's like, it does. Ten, it's like 10, 11, 12, I think. And then you're like 13 when you start eighth grade, 14. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, anyway, 
this teacher is having a hard time. I'm going to play the video um, because <laughs> based. Okay. So I keep hanging these flags up, and then I come back, and someone's ripped the pole off and broken it in half. But look what someone wrote. Oh, <laughs> I didn't see that part. <laughs> so that wow. is the. That's hilarious. Yeah, that is they're the. Sick of it. I think they're sick of it, and they should be. And it's honestly very violating to throw this in kids' faces and perverted. Because what does that flag represent? That well now represents a million things, but I'm still sure. it yeah, represents there's... sexuality. It represents sex. Stop throwing sex in children's faces. Yeah, that's that's. I mean, it's it's. Uh, <laughs> and also, I'm not sure what all these symbols are. One of these. I don't know what that fact, circle be, is now. Yeah, I don't know if it's maps. It's got like yeah. BLM. It's got the the transgender stuff they yeah. keep adding more to it it's ridiculous and i'm just so proud of the these kids that are actually standing up against it and and i think what people underestimate is children can be very rebellious <laughs> and, yeah. and so you know at some point it seemed like oh man the young generation is going to be ruined they're going to be ruined well there's a, a lot of rebellious kids out there who are standing up against yeah. this crap so good for them well they had um Oh, there was a recent study um, who said that Gen Z was more conservative yeah. than, than previous younger generations. Yep. And I suspect crap like this is is why. I, I forget if he says anything. There's only 10 more seconds of if he says anything of value here. Who says, that? who says that? Well, a lot of people say that. <laughs> it's okay if you have an opinion, but it's mine. It's not yours. I brought it in here. I I I brought this flag on Amazon.com. For real? I brought it into class. I spread my propaganda. <laughs> I Why was virtue you... signaling with this. <laughs> yeah. You hung it up. The kids took it down. Like, first of all, I don't know what school this is, but just judging by the desk, <laughs> um, <laughs> it might not be the best. Although there's uh -huh. a piano there. So I don't really know. This looks like, oh yeah, it's, okay. So oh, that's have, the piano. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's the music teacher, probably. Um, that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it makes sense. It's an art teacher or music yeah. teacher. But like this, I mean, that's I love. Like, uh, by the way, also yeah, subplot. Curricular is like ten bucks. Says the teacher wrote it. That's also a possibility to to force or create some kind of fake. Uh, Yep. No. Yeah, oppression. CK controversy. Bryce and Grace said these kids may not be as soft <laughs> as I thought. <laughs> Student of the year. Yeah. Who even says that? Oh, I don't know. About 97% of the population. <laughs> All right. I mean, like, um, Yay. you know, I just, I love that, like, yeah, the kids are going to be all right. Who even says that? Riley, there, that's a clip from um, uh, Boondocks. Uh, <laughs> Bro, who wrote that? Oh my God, I'm crying. It's it's actually really good penmanship, to be honest with it you. It is. So I mean, these kids are smart. Whoever yeah. did this is a smart kid. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, has their act together. <laughs> yeah, or the, the teacher, teacher wrote it. Something you know? or that or that. Yeah. <laughs> I I just think like it should be very 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 easy to not ever have this happen. Mm -hmm. All you have to do, I know it's crazy, but like, don't bring propaganda into your school. Yeah. Like, it's very simple to not do that. That's not your job. Yeah. And isn't it in, uh, is it Florida or Tennessee or somewhere that banned flags, unless they're on the American flag, you can't put them in the classrooms oh, anymore. Oh, love it. So yeah. no pride flags in the classroom. I can't, I thought, I think it was Tennessee. I think that's great. I think we need to see more of that because this has just gotten insane. And and when you break it down to just common sense terms instead of just activist terms, is they're literally parading a flag that is representing dudes doing butt stuff with each other. Why yeah. does that need to be celebrated, first of all? But also, why does that need to be in a classroom? Well, because these people need constant validation, then there is a saying like, they don't reproduce, they recruit because exactly. that's, that's, I mean, by the way, also when I, when I look at this, that G is just too good. <laughs> I think, I think the teacher wrote it. 
I think because, there's some like cursive in the G's and, and kids don't know how to do cursive. Yeah. I think, <laughs> Not I these think days. That, that Y, like that Y is kind of cursive. It's perfectly in line. Um, the, you know, and like, I don't know why both the N word and the G word are capitalized, but not the A like, mm, and they also spelled it with the A. <laughs> yeah. Not, yeah. Like, so it's not the hard R. So I don't, I don't know exactly. I'm going to go 50, 50. That yeah. the teacher did, did, did this for fake, like fake, uh, fake clout. Attention, yeah. yeah. And it, I don't like, first of all, I love that. I don't know what this tweet has like. Oh, 70,000 likes. Very good. Um, so, you know, things are changing. Maybe they don't. Are. I feel like one of the things like I, I talked about earlier, too, is like uh, I was talking about yesterday with decoy voice about body cameras, like on cops, like it should be the law that all cops have them and they should be on all the time. And if a cop ever turns it off, they should be fired immediately. Yeah. I think that cameras should be in every, in every classroom. I agree. And, and parents should have unfettered access to that footage at all times. And if you ever turn it off, because I think a lot of this crap would stop. Yep. A lot of it would stop. I agree. Yeah, yeah that's uh that that for me, hard, hard pass on um on you know buying that this isn't some base kid, but I you know, I don't know exactly. <laughs> he does he sounds like if you listen to him like so I keep hanging these flags up and then I come back and I keep hanging these flags up and then what mm. they keep taking them down. Is that okay. what he said? Okay, like, interesting. I don't know. It's. I think it'd be awesome if a kid actually did that, but it's every it's hard single to time. Tell. I hope yeah. they do. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, I I think that what 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 I found one of the things that I, um I learned by having a a little brother is that uh -huh. kids in high school now are actually are political, whereas when I was in high school, I mean, you had a couple like dorks who were like into right. politics, but. Most people aren't like taking part in the culture war, but now, exactly. now kids in high school are. And so like, sometimes they'll tell me like that the, him and his buddies will do stuff. And I'm like, oh, that was, well, you shouldn't do that. You're getting trouble. But see, I'm like based, like they, <laughs> they push back against, like, they all know who the, the, the alphabet teachers are and right. they talk about, they all make fun of them for having their pride flags. And they're like taking videos of them and sending them to me. So kids, kids have absolutely had enough of this stuff. Yeah. And it's important to be bold too, because when, when we weren't and when, you know, the more reasonable people were the, when the silent majority was a thing, we got run over. People started losing their jobs just over voting yeah. for Trump and yep. so on and so forth. And the so live and let live people got screwed. They, you know, they did. Screwed. And I was that person. Now I'm I not. was too. Same. Yeah. I, yep. I learned that, that it doesn't work. It sounds great, but it doesn't work that way when you got actual demons <laughs> fighting right. against you. Among us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The, um, somebody in chat keeps asking this question. I think it's very, you know, um, we'll, 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 uh, move on to the next topic, but they did ask as a, as a breakup, somebody said, Oh, here, Douglas Monroe asked, what are your and Mel's favorite grunge band of the nineties? Between oh, I have to pick from the list. Ooh. Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, Pearl Jam. I'm excluding Nirvana as I honestly think they're overrated. Well, okay. I mean, that's can I say Stone Temple Pilots? Yeah, why not? <laughs> STP. Well, I like Soundgarden a lot too, though. So out of oh, that that's list, Chris I say Cornell. Sound. He's one of the best. You oh, know, yeah, like, amazing. The um, I'll say this: you can't exclude Nirvana for me because like the first band I was ever in was a Nirvana cover band. The nice. first, like the first band Weezer was in was a Nirvana cover band. Like Nirvana was Weezer. like everybody, you know, that's why I learned bass. Um, you know, because of oh, Christmas so you Metallic. played bass. Yeah. Yeah. I still do. But that's like, awesome. I don't, yeah. So Nirvana was that band to me, but I, I, if I couldn't pick them, I mean, yeah. STP obviously was great. Soundgarden was great. Um, I wasn't a huge Pearl Jam guy to be honest with you. Right. Um, you know, I like some of the songs, like, but I was not a big Pearl Jam, Pearl Jam guy. Um, you know, you know, it's, I'm trying to think of other really popular grunge bands, though. That's probably yeah, all of them, you know, like the that's most the popular most... grunge. Yeah, I'm wondering. Mm -hmm. 
I'm gonna look. Oh, Smashing Pumpkin, they said. Oh, smashing sh- Pumpkins. I yeah, I never got. I wouldn't super call them it. grunge. I, I wouldn't right. say Smashing Pumpkins is grunge. And also that um that double sided record they did was one of the best ever. Um, they had a two a two disc set. It was called um. I don't forget, but it had, first of all, it had a bunch of really great songs on it. Um, and then um, what was the, I can't think of the name of the, of the uh, Bush is classic grunge. Yeah. Dude, I love have Bush. They were amazing. Clipped. The, is, um, is a, <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here. Is first. Tones, is Deftones grunge? No, that's like, that's oh. like metal. I would say. I love Deftones. Yeah, Deftones was good. That that um, White Pony or whatever that record was, like everybody had it. Yeah, Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. That that record was like amazing. Like I listened to that every day for a very, very, very long time. Um, Lord of the Rings says people only like Nirvana because Kurt died. Same reason people like Jimi Hendrix. Both are absurdly overrated. That's insane, bro. <laughs> uh, were That's you how take. old Lord of the Rings? That was a take. Um, I was around like i was in eighth grade when nevermind came out um or not nevermind i feel like i mean dude i had every record i had bleach which was one of their, their first record on tape i had in utero when in utero and like nevermind came out and then of course they had the unplugged in new york there was no band bigger in the world at the time and that was before kurt cobain ever died like yeah. that, that they were gigantic um so that that I'm gonna go ahead and disagree with that take because maybe now people look back and and f- overrate uh, Nirvana, but if you were alive at the time, they were the biggest freaking band in the world. Like they were huge. Um, how presidents of the United States of America, yeah, Pot USA, the little Dune buggy. I remember that song from them. Um, where would I? Seven Mary Three. Oh my God. Let's not go down this road. But there's, I had all those <laughs> records too. Yeah. Seven Mary Three, I had for sure. Um, Jaro Murphy says, on a side note, did you watch Fallout Show on Prime? I'm on episode two and it's surprisingly good. Joe Nolan, Joe, John Nolan produced it. It's gory, violent, and faithful to the game. I absolutely recommend it. I have heard good things. Oh, cool. I'm not a Fallout guy. So I have, it's low stakes for me. I, I don't mean that like, um, like I dislike Fallout. It's just it's not in my. It's not like I something never I got into Fallout. To. I never. Yeah. Did. So I I wasn't like I think I, I tweeted about it and I said like I'm happy for you guys because I mm-hmm. what I saw is like there's certain stuff with modern TV shows that you just have to accept. First of all, you're gonna have a, a female lead, right? And then you're gonna have a diverse cast. Okay, that's just <laughs> that's gonna happen. That's the reality. You're not getting anything produced now that isn't under that lens that said um it seems like most of the feedback was good i love walter goggins again can't recommend his performances in justified the shield um um the fat man enough he absolutely kills it the pr- vice principal i think he's in too with um with uh what's his name uh not Ken- kenny powers is not his real name he was in it at the tomb raider reboot movie which yeah i know i have a lot of complaints about the reboot itself, but I think the reboot movie was better. It told the story better than the reboot game did. And I liked Goggins and I think he did great. Yeah, he kills it. So, I mean, I think, I think like people said his performance was really good. So I'm really happy for uh, Fallout fans for that. Uh, Matt G. Hammond says, emission tests are a scam. Tennessee only has a few counties that even have emission tests. Yeah, of course they are. Especially now with <laughs> modern cars that have yeah. to be manufactured to such small, like such high levels where they're controlling, you know, emissions on cars at the factory. Um, White Trash Panda says, what's happening with the locals? It says the stream hasn't started yet. That I couldn't get the art, the RTMP settings for some reason. Um, and then once I started the stream, I couldn't add it. Matt says, you should get pirate software on the show. He runs a ferret rescue that pays for itself with a Twitch stream. Oh. Oh, I like that. I yeah. love ferrets. I've I've wanted a ferret for so freaking long. But oh, it's gross! Just, You're off the show if you get one. I haven't got one because they're <sighs> they're so... messy and, and a they smell. lot of work. Yeah, and a ton of work. And it's like I don't know if I've got the energy for that. <laughs> yeah, I saw this stand up comedian do this joke one time, and um, it, it went something like this: uh, If you're a lizard person. 
like that's everybody's least favorite thing about you. Like all the <laughs> friends that you know you hang out with, and I will say that that is true of ferret people. Too. <laughs> like, I I I know they're cute and they like hop around they are and they're really cute. cute. Every time I've ever been to somebody's house who has ferrets, it stinks. Yeah, and like, I, you know, look, I, I have five cats that. in my house, and no, and you don't smell them. Like people yep. come over and they're like, "You have five cats? That's crazy." Yeah, because I, you know, those litter boxes are clean twice a day, every yep. day. Yep. And even though ferrets are descented, they they still I don't know they have like a weird greasy smell. Yeah. They're cute, but I'm I, that's I just, just too much. Yeah. Aren't they dangerous? No, they're little like little beans. There's not. I mean, they have a lot of personality. They're cute, but like they get they're like a danger themselves. They can get lost <laughs> yeah, and run yeah. away like that happens because they're like escape artists from what I hear. Yeah. And they get stuck um, mm -hmm. like they get stuck in places and things like that. John Kimball had a ferret in kindergarten cop. Not true. <laughs> the classroom had a ferret. Oh, and, and John Kimball saved the ferret during the fire scene. He had it, and then the ferret played a very big, important role when the little boy was getting kidnapped. The little, I'm sorry, the little boy had it. Yeah, John had uh, the kid had the ferret and popped out of his shirt and bit the bad guy, um, <laughs> which I love. By the way, classic movie still holds up great. Um. Wait, oh, uh, Debru that dude says, I bought a Bible a couple of years ago. I'm 15 pages in, maybe one day. Hey, maybe. Um, and then the White Trash Panda says, Church is supposed to be a hospital for sinners, not a clubhouse for saints. Yes, right. That yeah. is true. Yeah, yeah, I would say that that's probably true. Um, Ill Will says, Thank you for your opinions on the OnlyFans chick. I really wanted Melanie's biblical point of view as I am biblically illiterate. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I try my best. <laughs> All I knew is that one chick was a whore in the Bible. Um, yes, Rahab. Yeah. <laughs> Not and even Rahab, one... but no, it wasn't um uh wasn't the one famously There's a whore? like that one where they where Jesus said you without sin cast the first stone. He told yeah. her go and sin no more. Um yeah, I mean there's multiple there are multiple whores in the Bible. I think Jesus Mary hated Magdalene. the hated tax collectors worse than he hated horse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think That's the, pretty base. <laughs> yeah. like, just I saying. just did my taxes. I'm right there. I agree. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The money changers or whatever, they he hated them. Oh, yeah. Uh, he chased them out of the temple with a whip. That's yeah. another thing, as I hate when people pretend like Jesus was just some hippie that is like, no, he he could tell it like it was, and he was not, wasn't afraid to chase them out with the whip <laughs> yeah right 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 the um elijah fire says melody please marry me thanks <laughs> <laughs> the sing sigra the b says the handwriting at the top of the flag is very neatly written it's also very faded for only being 10 minutes old i right. call shenanigans yes shenanigans should be called lol not a cat says that melanie you got to start a movement to take back the rainbow they've stolen the symbol that's a covenant of God. I've been trying. I had a shirt. I got a shirt last year that had a rainbow on it. It said taking the rainbow back with some Bible verses references oh, nice. on it. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. I got a lot of backlash for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get a hat. I'll get a hat that says that. There we the, go. Um, the brew that do says, uh, when are you join Eric July's band? I think he does rap music. That's not oh, for me. He does. Uh, he does like, I guess you would call it. It's kind of like that Lincoln park, a uh, metal core style, oh, where it has rap, but it's, oh. but it's still, in that metalcore genre. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's great. Uh, I love his band. I listened to. I I had like one of his songs on my playlist before I even knew him. Like knew him as a before friend. Before you knew Ripper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Before yeah. I knew Ripper, I was like, yeah. "What? That's." A, I showed my brother one of his videos or something. He's like, "Oh, I love his band." I was like, "He's in a band," and then I looked at the band. It's like, "Oh yeah, I have so, a song yeah, on my yeah. playlist from him." <laughs> Yeah, Lampo says, dude, Allison Chains, hands down. Yeah, I mean, Allison Chains, I mean, they're all good. I mean, those, I mean, we're we're talking about like the uh the white trash panda says, forget fair uh the trash panda, yeah, forget fair tell them a raccoon. Fun fact, Aww. I've always wanted a raccoon as a pet. I know it's not good because <laughs> they I've also seen people that do have them as pets. Like I'm talking like a rescued, I wouldn't like want right. to go to the store and buy a domesticated one. But I, I, there's a guy who famously has a raccoon as a pet and it's super naughty and it like dig holes in his walls and like, 
I couldn't, That's I couldn't cute. do that. <laughs> like, yeah, that would suck. I couldn't deal with that, but it's cute that he has one. I've yeah. seen people have pet skunks. They get them decented. Yes. But, yeah. But, they're cute yeah. too. Yeah. They're adorable. Commander Kim. Oh, we're going deep kindergarten cop lore. In kindergarten <laughs> cop, the ferret first appears in the car ride to the hotel with the puking cop. So it's John Kimball's pet that he brings to class. You're right. I stand corrected. You're correct. It is Kimball's pet. You're right. I, I totally blocked that out of my mind, but you are a thousand percent, thousand percent right. You owned me. You are the kindergarten cap, uh, Chad. Disco Cobra. Jeez, thank you. I was just on Gothic streams talking about music. Your turn. Oh boy. Which bands or artists are you all currently listening to? I've been listening to shoegaze type stuff. I like that. Um, and some the and bands like Sum 41, the new album is decent. Um, BMTH, I don't know who that is. Bring me the horizon. That's oh, one of okay. my faves. I love them. Corn cooking new jams. Oh man, I, I remember like corn. corn was corn was so huge. That Adidas song. Yeah, I think it was like middle school when that came out. That was a just ev ev it was everywhere. Yeah, Everybody knew that song. Was. Yeah, rep is black, so you assume he's a rapper. No, I've seen his music. Like it is, I it would call it rap, but I guess like too. I, I think, yeah, somebody maybe not. Were saying he did rap too. I, I don't know. Yeah, the I'm gonna I'll I'll name some bands that I listen to that all of my viewers will hate. Very few of them, um, because I like, um, like Indian folk rock music. So mm -hmm. like I like neoliberal musicians. Okay. Um, like, uh, <laughs> Like uh, Sufjan Stevens. Oh, do you like my... Black Keys? I used to like Black time? Keys. Yeah, okay, yeah okay. they're okay. <laughs> um, but I like, um, I like, uh, I would say like top five bands, would be like Sufjan Stevens, uh, David Bazan slash Pedro the Lion, same band. Old from my old punk rock days, bands like um, the Lawrence Arms, which was like pop punk when pop punk like that's like pre Blink One Eight Two when pop punk became commercialized like bands like the lawrence arms and alkaline trio cursive um those were bands that like when i was in a band those are the bands that i wanted to that we that our music sounded like that i wanted to play that I, that i you know always wanted to play with and then currently why wildly enough i'm listening to a lot bizarrely enough of um what's his name um ah, why is this playing um <laughs> yeah arden jones or like suicide boys um like um a little uh oliver tree even which is whatever i'm like a weird kick with that i've been I, i've been looking for those like uh small small metalcore bands on spotify lately i try to find ones that have like songs that are less than fifty thousand plays each um, oh okay yeah, I really like Outsider Heart, who I recently found, and Written by Wolves. Uh, that's a yeah. sweet name. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah that I remember finding bands on MySpace. Like that was a big mm -hmm. deal. Like when you have a band page. Oh, like I used to, I used to do that to look at different bands. I remember I drew like a fan art for this one small band. I can't even remember what their name was now. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely did a lot of that like back in the day. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, Propagandi. Yeah, Propagandi is um, How to Clean Everything is one of the best all-time records from when I was young and or um, I think their self-titled one. They're, you know, they're also like vegan. They're like the anti-Melanie <laughs> anti Mac. They're like, the, oh, the guy's no. vegan. Fun fact, um, Propagandi, which is you know, they have like two less talk, more rock. And then how to clean everything were awesome records, but then they went on, they, they were like hardcore, like hard punk rock. They sang about like, they were hard anti-war guys. And then uh -huh. they were like, um, you know, F religion guy. They had a song called F religion, all yeah. this kind of stuff. And then they went on to start a band called the weaker thans, which is like, I love. And it's like, um, more, um, like, uh, it's more melodic and more like indie and like, it's it's just a totally different style of music, but the same the same people. So it's uh, it's always funny to me because I later went on. I was like, oh, I love this band. I love this song. And I like look up their discography. I'm like, these guys used to be propaganda. So, <laughs> anyway, yeah, fun fun fact. Okay. Um, 
yeah, the let's see. Uh yeah, Rage Against the Machine. Yeah, Rage for the Machine. Mm-hmm. Rage Against the Machine is a band that was definitely overrated. I'll say that. They, they, they had two, they had two good records and that was it. Like I like like two songs from them. And I used to like that those songs a lot, but yeah, now I can't hardly bring myself to even listen to them. Yeah. <laughs> Same yeah. with Green Day. I cannot, but I also never really liked Green Day a lot. I wasn't into it. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah. didn't love Green Day. It was like kind of like like um butt rock music. I didn't I didn't really care. I for it. am a big butt rock music fan. <laughs> I I love Nickelback Creed. Uh, Creed, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so no shame. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what's funny is I'm going to the Creed concert. Uh, really? VIP with Zach from Meta PCs. We're going, we're, yeah, yeah, we're going to the Creed concert. They're playing, they're playing in Wisconsin like uh this summer. Uh-huh. So Zach's flying in. He's a huge Creed guy. He's like, Would you go? That and I'm like, awesome. dude, if I'm like, I'll go, but I I'm you're buying tickets, Meta PC's right. buying tickets, and I'm not sitting in then. I want like you yeah. know how like if you've been to a concert lately, um, a lot of them will sell like VIP tickets where they'll have yeah, like yeah. standing room and you have like your own bathrooms and stuff. Uh-huh. That's kind of the only way I do it now. So like, uh, I was like, well, if you buy VIP tickets, I'll go see Creed. And apparently now I'm going to see Creed. I guarantee you I'll I have like it. three beers and I'll be like, for their arms wide open. There you go. Like, I'll, be, I'll be into it. I know it. I love yeah. it. You know, Creed has this song called, or is that just Scott Stapp doing his own thing? I don't know. But he had the Creed or him, Scott, has a song called Jesus Was a Rock Star. And I love it. It's actually like pro Jesus, like I mean, Jesus oh, nice. rock star. It's awesome. Really have you ever good. Divin, have you ever dove into the conspiracy theory that what is that band? Um, there's a conspiracy theory that this band that nobody thinks is a Christian band is actually a Christian band. Uh-huh. Um, it's oh, oh, chat. Come on, help me out. It's like um, is it? Uh, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. It's on the tip of my tongue. Um. They are uh, Evanescence because I no, know. Okay, no, it's um, it's not Lincoln Park. It's not Pod. The Killers, yeah, the Killers. The Killers. Yeah, I've yeah. never heard that one. There's like a, there's a um, yeah. If you go down that that rabbit hole, like, is are the Killers a Christian band? It's 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 funny. Like it makes a lot of sense. Okay. Yeah. Skillet Skillet is a Christian band. I went to a Christian music festival um when I was young. Oh, Skillet's Skillet great. Was, or they're Skillet older stuff, Iron, especially. Yeah, well, this is when I was 18. So I saw them right. 23 years ago. And um I went there with a girl who I was dating who uh-huh. was like I went up there with like we all went up in a van and like you know, it was like my parents were like I was like, can I, you know, can I go to, can I go to a music festival? I'm like 18 or 17 or 18. Uh-huh. And they're, they're like, no. And I'm like, yeah, but it's a Christian music festival. They're like, oh, there okay. you go. Yeah. So they let me go. <laughs> and I think, um, there was some boob touching that went on, but the, uh, I remember, I remember the head. I didn't know any of the bands. All I knew is I wanted to touch this girl's boobs. So then I was like, <laughs> she's like, well, I'm going to, you should come to this music festival. I'm like, Ooh, I'm uh-huh. supervised time. Cool. And then I, I never didn't know any of the bands, but then I ended up, I think, um, POD played. I like so POD. Did Five Iron Frenzy and okay. Skillet. I'm like, I look back now, I'm like, oh, those bands were actually huge. I didn't even yeah. like, I, yeah. there, there was a lot of people there. And I was like, at that time, I didn't know how, how popular they were. But at that time in what would have been like 2000s or 2001, 2000, 1999, those bands were way bigger than mm-hmm. uh than i even knew yep. but uh the moral of the story is i did touch boob fellas so it was <laughs> it was it was great the um so <laughs> the did i miss any other ones oh um I'll, I'll catch them back up later matt hammond says jeremy you might like wolf alice from the uk uh churches was the first uh album i have it yeah i have the churches record i like them yeah uh wolf alice i don't know usually when i lay out like my weirdo indie bands that i like other weirdo, other people that like weirdo indie bands are like, dude, like um, there's a right. longtime viewer who's I know, I don't know if he's in there, but his username is Ocean Breathe Salty. And I'm like, oh, are you a Modest Mouse fan? And he's like, yes. I'm like, yeah, see, some people like, <laughs> yeah, that's a name of their one of their records. 
um or songs okay anyway um we got sidetracked <laughs> here let's see okay we talked about this um here's something that's interesting this says uh this is a i don't know a, how would you pronounce that a, uh, I, alan alanthus Alanthus oh, Alanthus. G? Okay, I get it. Yeah, it's one. Yeah, okay. Alanthus G, the community manager. Yes, another one of a game <laughs> that is the Sweet Baby Ink Detected Curator page. It's called Hyper Lightbreaker. According to her, this collective that she's running called Gumbo needs more diversity because there's not enough women in there. Then again, according to her, the solution is to start hiring based on sex. Um, if as if hiring based on sex had anything to do with making a good, great game. Yeah. I mean, this what do you think of this ongoing purge that's going on? Because it was the Star Wars community manager. Now, mm -hmm. this community manager, it's almost like while people weren't paying attention, there were like yeah. secret, secret SJW meetings, and they were like, How can we accumulate power? Right. And they realized that getting into these community manager roles were super powerful because. They had immense power for what is essentially an entry level job. Yeah, so exactly. You don't need any skills, but you're the gatekeeper between, for example, you're the guy or gal that can start or stop a sponsorship with a certain creator. Yep. You're yep. the guy or gal who determines what YouTuber gets stuff early, what stuff, you know, they wield a ton of power for a low paying job. You hit the nail on the head with that. And that's one reason why a lot of these people, obviously not every community manager is that way, but there are a lot of people, uh, you know, narcissists or people who just want to control others um, or control their own narrative or force their own narrative on people. They go for these community manager jobs. They don't have skills. They care more about their agendas. They care more about having some sort of power and in this case you get to be like a voice for a big company that has a huge fan base uh without having to to have a bunch of credentials so you get a lot right. of this trash that in there and i just love that they've been exposed so much lately and not in the same way these cancel pigs try to do things this is again like we talked about last time that lives of tiktok approach just share their content, show what they're saying. Yeah, exactly. I think um, that that's been particularly effective. Just, hey, this is what they said. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, oh, they just hate white people. Cool, 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 cool. All right, well, I'm not buying Star Wars Outlaws. Not that I was going to anyway. Right. And I acknowledge that. When I talk about like boycott stuff, like I covered the Planet Fitness boycott thing. I'm like, look, I'm not a Planet Fitness member or right. Bud Light. I never pretended like Kid Rock did that I drank Bud Light. I don't yeah. drink Bud Light. It doesn't cost me anything to boycott it. Right. But, you know, I think it's still important to spread these messages around because I don't want to give these people my money, you know, mm -hmm. in general. Like, I don't, if she's, I want to know whatever game she's working on. And I'm never going to give them money, period, ever. Like, mm -hmm. that's that's just how I want to live my life now. I'm getting even older tomorrow. And <laughs> I just, you know, I, I don't want to do it. I can live without it. There's not a single video game in the world. There's not a single movie or a single TV show or a single record that will, that I have to have or need to have ever. Yeah, so it's just with like, modern you know what? stuff especially. Like yeah. for me, I, I I needed those Tomb Raider remasters. Yeah, I, yeah. That was a need. Yeah. We got that. Now, if they weren't accurate and if they were wokeified and changed and all that, then I would have passed on it. Uh, but no, they were accurate. And speaking of that, they just announced a patch today um, that added some stuff. And one of the things they added was um, this Nightmare in Vegas old school like level from tomb raider 2 that uh ended up not seeing the light of day before and she had that's this cool outfit. that's how you do a remake she yeah. had this outfit that was just this all leopard print like oh, leggings boy. and tight top and they put they gave her that outfit uh in the in the new patch so reluctant like, yeah. i bet you they were reluctant about that well that's <laughs> the thing though is what aspire has done is they actually reached out to community members who had 
already done big fan projects like level editors who have created a, a bunch of really cool uh, classic Tomb Raider levels or fan artists and uh, who have really good with 3D art and have done amazing fan art. And the reason why the remasters are so good is because Crystal Dynamics didn't make them. First of all, yeah, yeah, right. secondly, uh, that you know they were outsourced to Aspire, and Aspire hired actual fans uh, to, to shocking, do the shocking work that the product it. was good. Yeah, yeah, and so it turned out great, and fans loved it because you know made by the fans. Yeah, the um, if if people watching will allow just a minute, a moment for station identification. If you're one of the four thousand or so people out there, if you're watching on Rumble, my co-host on every Tuesdays and Thursdays is Melanie Mack. She's here on Rumble. If you're in the Rumble chat now or later, please do give her channel a follow. She's at 6.32 thousand. Oh, 6.33. Let's see if we can get that up. If you're on YouTube, her channel is Melanie Mac Go Boom, which is also linked in the description. And wherever you're watching, follow this channel, you know, so you get notified when we go live. Also, um, while you're doing that, I'm going to pay some bills. This video is sponsored by tax network usa speaking of taxes oh are you struggling with back taxes or unfiled returns the irs is escalating collections adding twenty thousand new agents and sending over 5 million collection letters to kick off 2024 in these challenging times your best defense is tax network usa don't let the irs take advantage of you with over 14 years experience tax network usa has saved their clients over a billion dollars in back taxes no matter the size of your tax issue the expertise their expertise is your advantage. They specialize in negotiating with the IRS, aiming to significantly reduce your debt. Tax Network USA doesn't just negotiate. They also protect you from IRS seizures and manage your yearly returns for ongoing compliance. Importantly, they're licensed to help with all state issues regarding of where you live in the United States. Don't let the IRS step up its game. Seize control of your financial future now. Collect tax, contact Tax Network USA for immediate relief and expert guidance. Call 1-800-245-6000. 1-800-245-6000 or follow the link in the description tnusa.com slash jeremy turn to tax network usa and find your financial peace of mind yeah very good yeah if you got if you got back taxes check them out the uh i did miss a message from disco cobra oh uh jr says what's your favorite creed song i could i couldn't even name i'm not gonna pretend like creed wasn't huge but i I can't remember songs. There Melanie probably an, has one. There was an underrated song on their clay, that human clay album called What If. I play I had played that on loop so many times. And it's there not one of their most popular ones, but it's probably one of my favorites. And that Jesus was a rock star one. Well, even though that might just be Scott's own thing, but definitely suggest listening to that one. It's good. <laughs> that would still count. Um yeah. Disco Cobra says some of the Christian rockers I tend to to listen to our red pretty i heavy. love red i saw them in concert once oh nice yeah thousand foot crutch also great pod is still dropping records nwo themed album also the band kitty it's all female and it's new metal are releasing new stuff okay shout out yeah um appreciate the support by the way i never ask for super chats but they do support the show but all i ask is that you give my wonderful co-host her channel follow support her support her work too she'll be starting her own show maybe yes. weekly soon yes yeah, soon uh yeah th not this wednesday but i'm planning on launching it the wednesday after the next one so oh, okay so two wednesdays from now so this month yes. she'll have a weekly show that you can tune into and that'll be on her melody mac go boom channel as well as her rumble channel so mm -hmm. you're going to want to tune in for that now there is this story that I wanted to talk about. And there is, um, we talked about this, I think a little bit the other day uh, about the study that said, you know, puberty blockers don't actually do anything. In fact, they do damage. Well, that news is now reaching the same people uh, that, you know, that have been pushing the trans ideology this is an individual whose show is called the Majority Report, and it's largely irrelevant um, outside of you know responding to literally every Tim Pool video ever created. Um, he's basically blacklisted from everybody because he's a huge uh, loser um, <laughs> and weirdo. But uh, anyway, 
Uh, Tim Poole says, if you look old enough to fight, if you're old enough to fight and die in the war, you should be allowed to surgically remove your testicles. Obviously, he's this is a classic Tim Pool bait tweet. Mm -hmm. um, but what's happening now is so the cast report has come out and disproven a lot of the uh, trans ideology that is the left has pushed. Um, oh, yeah. He also used to be a voice of somebody on Bob's Burgers. That's actually also true. Oh, but here Keegan from Seattle, what's on your mind? Hey, I just wanted to uh, bring to you guys this is a, short clip. a report that was just released in the UK about trans healthcare. Uh, a report? Um, okay. It's the, yeah, it's this CAS report or CAS review. Um, and it's um, it's going to come out in uh, soon. As Get to the, the point. Uh, recommendations <laughs> that it makes are their, their uh, reaction is for trans healthcare, in the, yeah. uh, at least in the UK. How um, are you seeing this report had, if it's not out yet? Uh, it is yeah, out. I think it was leaked, uh, but there are some stories starting to come out about it uh, from specifically like a lot of transphobic outlets, like the New York Times, um, Tech Matters. Um, the like New that. York they Times say, is transphobic. Uh, they may have had <laughs> what? Okay. Uh, the mainstream outlet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that pushes it too. Um, yeah. Culminating in like this uh, recommendation that people under the age of like up to twenty five shouldn't be allowed to really transition. Uh oh. Uh, up to twenty five. Really twenty five. Um, yeah, it's like, you know, it's almost like your body's about, changing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Other, like, healthcare implications, you know, right to abortion, things like that. If people at the age of 25 aren't being allowed to transition, you can go, you can uh, go fight in a war and die, but you don't have the right to, um, to transition. That's absurd. Right. They're, this is what the left does. It's, they're not making it illegal. They're right. just saying it's not good. There's no scientific understanding you know, or reasoning i might get pushed back for this but i don't even care i wouldn't even be against it being illegal because just because you can do something do, or, or somebody gives consent to something doesn't make it right it's still some frankenstein crap should we be allowing people to amputate their arms and legs if they're perfectly healthy because oh they're an adult and they want to do it that's still like a, a very irresponsible thing for a doctor to do it's mutilation and in the case of of chopping off other body parts and yeah. this this gender confirmation surgery it it is not the real thing it never will be the real thing it's it's wounds it's unnatural it's it's frankenstein stuff and i don't think it's humane and i i'm perfectly fine with that being banned if someone wants to larp as the opposite gender and pretend uh, you don't have to to have a wound on your body to do that <laughs> well yeah i mean i think I don't know about the making it illegal. I don't know if we agree there, but I will say doctors in the same breath, uh, I, basically the Hippocratic Oath kind of prevents this. You're supposed to do no harm right. and you are harming people. So, I mean, you know, I, I don't think that, yeah. uh, I don't think that, you know, I think doctors that do this stuff should lose their license for sure, yeah. you know? Um, and it's really worrying because this specific review uh, reviewed a bunch of other studies about trans healthcare. There were uh, who, who, is, who is CAS? Like who is putting out this report? Uh, CAS is the last name of um, whoever led this report, this review. Um, I don't have the specific name. Um, How does this guy not know but, about this anyway? I even <laughs> I know about it. Doctor, um, but they reviewed a bunch of other studies, um, up to I think it was like fifty-three different studies, and they rejected um, like fifty of them, like ninety. 98% of the studies Oops. Um, that had support for trans healthcare Oops. Uh, for being low quality. They rejected all of these uh, reviews. <laughs> <laughs> so they're finding out in real time yeah. that, that pushing all this crap doesn't work. And yep. there's no scientific evidence. And we talked about this stuff before where like it truly is demonic when they tell yep. parents like, would you rather have a trans kid or a dead kid? Yep. That's how they bully parents into doing these procedures or putting, put, giving these kids these puberty blockers, which we now know, according to at least the, the most recent study, don't do jack. And at minimum, they do harm people, even though they've always said, oh, you could just put a pause on the most important physiological time of your <laughs> life and there'll be no consequences. Oops, there are consequences. Yep. Um, perhaps there's a trend with um, like, do I need to tap my finger on the sign of the meme of all mm -hmm. the people who are ascribed to this ideology that have gone into schools over the past 
um, two years. It seems like we're at like eight in a row. So like maybe pumping these people, people full of hormones who are already unstable isn't a yep. good idea. I mean, yep. it's, it's like the video quality is low, but you can just see in his face, like, Oh, yeah. cr Oh crap. Like, <laughs> It's all, it's all a hoax. Well, and they can't use the, when they can't use the science in their defense, because that was all they were holding on to for the longest time. Well, now the science is against them. Uh, it, right. It, yeah, it doesn't look good. And that's one thing that I hate too, is how they always call this, these transgender surgeries and all that. They call it healthcare. And that's yeah. their way of trying to make something some sort of Frankenstein practice. That is how they try to make it sound like a positive, like a good thing. Oh, this is healthcare. It's mutilation. <laughs> it's not healthcare. It's not yeah. gender affirming, right? And you see the major issue when you have young people switch from youth to adult care, there are all sorts of problems to bureaucratic mess, blah, blah, blah. One thing Sam said the caller, Sam and the caller are confused by is how systematic reviews actually work. Uh, there is no sense in which a well-conducted systematic review is suspect solely because it throws out a lot of studies. So essentially, like th the idea that in real time, we've seen several reports come out. Now you're going to see either nobody's going to cover it, which is yeah. probably what will happen. We know that. And it's like, I, I said this on Twitter, like lawsuits, we talked about this, like lawsuits are going to be in the billions. Like there's yep. going to be, Matt, there's that um, detransitioner who called in on the got in on the Disney call, the earnings call the other day. She's suing her doctor. I'm sure Jazz Jennings, whose life is a complete mess because I her psychopathic so. mom forced her through. You know, I think she had gender transition surgery when she was 16. I think it, yeah, 16 or 17. So, yeah, yeah. yeah Chloe Cole is the the detransitioner. Um, but yeah, like all this stuff is coming to a head. Because why? I know this is going to shock some people. All these 17 year old, 16, 17 year old kids filled with angst who decided that they were trans are adults now. Yeah. And they're like, oh crap. I actually like penis. Um, I, I'm not, uh, I, I like men. I guess I'm not trans. Um, or right. I like, or I like women. I guess I'm not trans. Oops. I cut off my, my breasts. Now what do I do? Oops. I cut off my dong and I had a big slice yeah. of my arm cut off. And uh, and made a, a new dong or whatever. It's like you can't go back. You, you ruin can't. your body forever now. Yep. Oh, it's tragic. it's uh, yeah. It's it's um, <laughs> it's 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 demonic. It always was. It is. They thought they could make all this money off these people by getting them on pills for the rest of their life. Yep. Hey, you want to look like a woman? Guess what? You have to buy hormone injections from us. You yep. have to put them in your body every month for the rest of your life. That's a and great that's customer. The thing is, if you just see like hormonal birth control, for example, see women who uh, that's supposed to naturally balance your hormones. You see all the issues that yeah. that causes for women. You see the left pushing back against that, right? The narrative is, oh, the right just wants women to be forced to have babies. No, you that can abstain stupid. from sex. Exactly. Like, people are saying that, like people are saying that it and screws plus there with bodies. Are there but are non-hormonal birth control methods. That's not the only thing. You could try a rubber. You could try an IUD. There's other yeah. stuff out there. We now, I mean, it is irrefutable that birth control has causes wreaks havoc on women's bodies. It does. It absolutely does. And so just seeing how it affects women negatively, uh, it, it throws the hormones off, also can make a woman go even more psycho than we are in our default settings yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i mean imagine you're taking a male and and pumping these artificial hormones in him what that's going to do to him because not only are you going to get those negative effects that we're seeing women have but this is a dude who also is naturally male so is going to no tell like it's just a recipe yeah. for disaster You're pushing against what your body is producing every single day yeah like every every molecule every every atom of your body every every single piece of your body is male and and all you do every day is wake up and make it fight itself or yep. female and so and you're already yep. somebody who has um dysphoria or other mental issues and ultimately that's why you end up with these people doing even more insane things. That's why the 
self deletion rate doesn't get better. It gets yeah. worse because these people are like, oh man, I cut my boobs off. Shoot. Well, yeah. I guess I'll just, you know, jump off a parking garage. Yeah. It's just happened yesterday. I think like that Gosh, or two days ago. That's sad. Um, you know, it's, it's actually, I don't know if they had transition, but they right. were trans. Right. Um, but yeah, I, wanna... I think it's terrible too with the look at, uh, the, the violence that's, that's coming from a lot of these dudes who were pretending to be women. And that's something else is, is imagine having the, the testosterone and the strength of a man, but the emotions of a woman. Yeah. That yeah. is, oh, that's, that is, that sounds terrible. That's a, <laughs> that's a recipe for, for a disaster. I mean, we all saw the, everyone remembers it's ma'am. Like, yeah. how did that, did that person seem stable? You know, not to me. And, you know, maybe yep. that happens when you're, you know, you're, you're cramming this stuff into your body every day. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Magna Defenders who says, every time I see a reporter say that the coof is still around, I face palm. <laughs> Guys, the coof is over for the vast majority of the world. But if you want to speed run yourself into bankruptcy, keep at it. Yeah. Just wait till the lawsuits start for that too. Oh, they yeah. won't be able to get at Pfizer, but they'll get at, you see what they'll do. They'll try to get at um, Fauci or they'll try to get at. There'll be other targets, yep. um, individual doctors, this whole like emergency. We need to look at this. Oh, emergency approval just means everybody gets off scot-free. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't agree with that at all. Um, Tevin says, uh, my brother is entrenched in trans ideology. No matter how much evidence I present him to sway him, he rejects reality. You just can't swap genders at will. You could put lipstick on a pig, but in the end, it's still a pig. Gosh, that's I would be say, tough. yeah, I can't imagine one of my brothers that happening. So I feel for you. That would be tough. Yeah, I would say, you know, just be there for when they're ready to see the light. Yeah, because yeah. most people eventually do. Like yep. that's that's the reality of it. The real scandal is the W path files. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is either. Yeah. Sorry. Jeez. We're getting educated tonight. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to see. Oh, uh. Matt Hammond said, I want to have a pet possum. They cannot get rabies and they eat roaches, ticks, and spiders. That's true. Shout out possum. Oh. I know they're ugly, but they are the great um, cleaning crew. Like out here, I love possums because they eat ticks. And like, I'm okay. like, and I don't want to pick them off my dog, which I basically always have to do. <laughs> um, Debrew, that dude says, Hawthorne Heights, June, Marshmallow, and Colt Ford lately. Um, the Swamp Cleaner says, uh, who is your daddy and what does he do? Yeah. Um, Matt G. Hammond says, Jeremy. Oh, I, I hit that one. Lord of the Reese says, one of two. I have a five iron frenzy shirt. They're goaded. Assemblies of God churches have this competition called Fine Arts, which involves music, art, et cetera. We did a cover of Handbook for the Sellout. <coughs> oh, Handbook for the Sellout. Nice. Um, Matt Hammond says, Five Finger Death Punch is great. Their music I love video. Them. Living the dream is amazing. It came out during the lockdowns, pushes back hard against politicians. I remember that music video for sure. Uh, I remember that went semi-viral for that reason. Um, oh, Lord of the Reese, we made it to the nationals. Oh, you're talking about, and I won some scholarship money for it. Oh, nice for your performance. Cool. Uh, there's a YouTube video of it. If you look up uh, Iron Fist of Jesus Handbook for the Sellout, uh, me and my emo kid form playing guitar. Nice. Yeah, emo is fine. I was I was definitely an emo kid. I didn't have the blade, like the haircut blade. I didn't have that. Right. But like, I um, did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was uh yeah, that was definitely a phase of my life. To brew that you says, um, the way you said you were going to pay the bills had me worried about this is gonna devolve into a DSP stream. Oh yeah, sorry, no. Um trigger four 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 says, fine, take my money. Hey, thank you. Um, the White Trash Panda says, Melanie, check out Demon Hunter, Disciple, and Project 86. Oh, I love them, especially Disciple. Yeah, I think she's, yeah, she's pretty anime-based. Like, she knows a lot more about it than I do. Is that anime or oh, is there, that's, are those that's rock Christian bands? bands. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> they sounded like anime. Anime okay. is cool, too. Yeah. I am anime-based as well. Oh, uh, yeah. Damn, yeah, boomer moment there. Well, they sound like anime shows. Hey, um, yeah. <laughs> isn't an anime called Demon Hunter? There Am I it, well, yeah, it's Demon Slayer. Oh, yes, Demon you're Slayer. right. That's okay. what you're thinking of. I yeah. see you. I see. Yeah. De Young says, Melanie, share the Bible channel on Rumble. She hasn't moved it over yet. I will. I will. I'm getting there. I just finished my taxes today. So I'm Tomorrow. finally less overwhelmed. Yeah. I'll get there. <laughs> 
Pacman says doctors who perform these type of surgeries on people, especially children, need to be put in prison. I think Melanie would agree with that. Uh, Lord of the Reese's Reliant K. Oh yeah, that's another. They were another Christian oh, yeah. band, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, Anne Berlin, M A E, Under oh, Oath, yeah. um, The Chariot, No More Jean, August Burns. Oh, MXPX, I loved. Yeah, I saw them. I saw the first time I saw Blink One Eight Two. MXPX opened up for them. I was a huge MXPX fan. That was in the era of like Less Than Jake, MXPX. Um, what was that other band that I that I was like Leg Wagon? All those bands that, in that era, of, like that Warp Tour year, was was great. I'm trying to think of the name of that other band. Um, no use for a name. That was another band like that. Um, yeah, there were a lot of Christian bands that were really popular in that era. Uh, the thing about Christian bands is. People hear Christian band and they think that it's like going to be at a sermon, you know, and that it's like weird and right. cringy. There are Christian bands like that. Right. There are. And there are like, where they're very on the nose. Yeah. And, yeah, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, but then there are other bands that were, you know, Christian in their faith. They were straight edge. Um, and there were a lot of popular ones. I wonder if they're still. I wonder. Disciple is really, really good. They, the, their latest album had a couple songs I really liked on it that had some really, really great lyrics, but also oh, okay. was just very like, okay, this this just feels metalcore. It's really cool. Yeah. All right. Good shout balance. out. Uh, Mimic Lives. They claim everything is healthcare. They call abortion healthcare. It's literally the opposite. Um, mm -hmm. soon they'll say euthanasia saves lives. Oh yeah. We're not even True. that far We're away from already that. basically there. That 22 yeah. year old girl who just did that. I have depression. Canada. I'll just kill myself. Yeah. That is cool. just terrible. Yeah. Abraham got to go, but here you go. Hey, thank you. And then pushups 2345 says, oh, you're, that's about the, what we asked about the WPATH files. They're oh. the leaked records of the world's professional association of transgender health. They are fanatics and hid their Frankenstein stuff. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Yep. This is all going to come crumbling down in the very, very near future. Oh, King of Biltong snuck in under the wire. I'll give it to you. <laughs> King of Biltong. Good afternoon from Anton's Meat and Eat. Free shipping on your Biltong using cord quartering. One word. Thank you. On BiltongUSA.com and AntonUSA.com. Your Biltong is en route. Because we hate it when we see you sad. I know I'm down <laughs> to my last package. It's good um, stuff too. They sent me the Wagyu and the Angus. Very, yes. very good. Yeah. So check out. Uh, it's a healthy, carbless snack. I don't think there are carbs in it. There's, there's like not. minimal carbs. There's um, from the seasoning maybe or something. Yeah. The the I want to say the Wagyu one had a couple. Um, but yeah, it's not a lot. It's it's a low carb. Of yeah <laughs> and it keeps you it keeps you filled full which is why it does I like beef it. is beef is like a superfood the healthiest thing you can possibly eat i love it i eat beef every day so yeah why don't you marry it uh, <laughs> i the, will yeah, yeah the last stand by sabaton is sensational okay is that another maybe another sabaton isn't that a metal band i don't know if yeah. they're christian or not Maybe I, it's I just a metal reference. That. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, deer and, and deer and elk is great too, but it's hard to get reliably. True. It's hard True. to get. Like in the summertime, there's a guy at the farmer's market who has an elk farm and I buy a, as much as I can. But I'll tell you, I learned the hard way. Like I just grabbed a bunch of it and I went up to the checkout and I was like, cool, uh, I'll take all this stuff because I'll just throw, throw it, you know, I'll freeze it. And yeah. it was like 400 bucks. I'm like, oh, <laughs> shit. Like, <laughs> I had already, and yeah. it's like this, this guy's there. It's like some farmer. He smells like manure. And he's like, I can't not buy it now. Those but are the I, best people to buy from. I just bought half a cow's worth of ground beef. It's like yeah. 600 bucks, but it's in my freezer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> It'll <nice>. last me. <laughs> yeah, that's the way to do it. Yeah. Well, that's what I did. I was like, okay, well, it was the end of getting close to fall. So the, the um, farmers, the, there's a farmer's market in um, West Bend, which is like a small town. Uh, north of where I live now, but that's where I was born. So I go back. Their farmer farmers market is really good, and um, like there's anything you want, you can get there. And that yeah. getting near the end, I was like, oh, the elk guy's here. Cool, I'll take whatever he's got. And then 
That is the best way to buy food, especially if you can get raw milk as well. Some of these, I don't know if if they're how legal it is here in Texas. So um, going to those like uh, farmer trade events and stuff, you can get raw milk there. And yeah, my brother's a dairy farmer. So (laughs) nice. Very good. Well, brother-in-law, technically. Oh, a lot of the reasons I missed the second half. No, I didn't. I read it. I read that whole thing all about you looking up the video online. I gave you, I read that unless I missed something else from you. Um, Lord of the Rings. Oh, this one. Um, oh, and my favorite band as cities burn call, um, as cities burn, all Christian bands are goaded. Oh, I missed that part. I stopped at MXPX on my apologies, sir. Um, okay. I think that's, yeah. So get some Biltong subscribe to Melanie's channel. Oh, Matt Hammond. Last one. Lacey Sturm of Flyleaf is amazing. Oh, I love her. Uh, she is so tiny, but a huge voice. Yep. She's going to end herself, went to church where the pastor said there was a suicidal spirit and that she turned to God. I didn't know You know, it's funny is I have, um, I got a book um, from the Easter Bunny <laughs> on, uh, on cryptids. Uh-huh. And there is a cryptid that people see. It's like a, it's like a slender man. It's not the slender man. Right. He's like a tall figure with a stovetop hat. Maybe chat will know. I know Six Hexenhammer would know because he's big into cryptids. But right. supposedly this spirit follows or demon, however you want to call it, follows people who are having thoughts of who are depressed. Ooh. And his sole purpose is to and he goes after kids. And oh. then his purpose is to push them like over the edge. So Goodness. maybe that's what he's right. Maybe that's what he's talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Felwyn. Oh, I got that one. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to think he, Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, sort of. Um, but he's like out in, um, he gets seen out. Like he's like an Indian, like he's out in like Montana and Montana state park or something like that. Um, I forget what it is, but you can look it up. It's in my, it's in, it's in my wonderful cryptid coloring book. It's not really a coloring book, but it's like a cryptid <laughs> guide. Oh, a pushup says on Tucker. I've been to Israel and visited many Christian sites. Bible in hand, an Orthodox rabbi gave me a tour of the Temple Mount. Uh, Temple Mount Tucker is lying. Oh, <sighs> I haven't. I'm not all up to date. Tucker's on Tucker's into about. some. Yeah, Tucker's into a little bit. Uh, he's into a little bit of hot water. We didn't get to it. We ran out of time, okay. but he's in a little bit of hot water. Where? Oh, by the way, everyone, tomorrow I will be live at one Eastern. Not this time. One Eastern. Just want to remind you because it's my birthday tomorrow and I want to go out to dinner. Um, so I'm still going to work on my birthday, but be <laughs> ready at one Eastern for the show. Um, yeah, he's into a little bit of, you know, I, I, here's my thing is I really, I really try to stay out of the, the Jew stuff or the right. Palestine stuff. I don't understand at all. And if you misspeak, like, it could ruin your career. <laughs> yeah. So like I, I, you know, I tend to take a position like I know it's an easy position, but it's like I'm a hey, America first, America last, whatever happens over in Israel. You know, I, I don't really care. I don't care. Let them bomb each other into oblivion. I, I'd rather they didn't, obviously. But oh, that cryptid is called Hatman. You're correct. Pac-Man. Yes. Hatman, and then there, I think there's a Navajo name for it or something. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. So Tucker, like it's such a hot button issue that I don't understand any of it about I don't understand any of it. Like uh, to me, it seems like one side's bombing the other one into oblivion, but then all of a sudden the other side is like terrorist. So I, I don't know. It's it seems like a bad situation. And um Tucker brought on some guy that Essentially, there's all these news articles that came out that was like, um, Tucker Carlson says you've lost a thread to U.S. Christian leaders who support Israel. So, of course, you say anything like, hey, don't support Israel. Then people are like, oh, my God, you're the worst. Tucker Carlson's apologia for Christian anti-Semitism. Like, all this, like, ugh, like. I think it's, here on the, when it comes to stuff like this, it's okay to say you don't understand the situation and you're doing the best you can and i think to yeah i think with something like this to have such a strong okay anybody who thinks different than me right now on this they're the enemy so on and so forth um as a christian and a bible believing christian i always lean toward i want to support israel that's my stance but i'm also 
not the type of person that's going to say anybody who sees things a little differently here, uh, they're the worst people in the world. This is a, 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 a big deal issue going on and we only yeah. see a little portion of it. So I understand why there are people with different viewpoints and with stuff like this, it's always my prayer that God make sure you show me what, where yeah. I need to stand on this. And then I pray that others will find that, that as well. So that's, that's how I choose to handle it. Yeah. I say, um, yeah, I, I, I just say one side has, uh, you know, there's not a lot of people lining up to take in refugees from there. So I'm just curious about that. Right. But other than that, <laughs> like, you know, we just had a, uh, uh, death to America rally in Dearborn, Michigan. I'm more worried about that than what's going on in, in Israel. Um, with that, uh, <laughs> we'll leave it with that. I don't know enough to have a strong take on it. And I just think there's enough problems here in America. Tucker's in some dangerous waters, uh, mm -hmm. when you speak out against this kind of stuff. So that's our show for today. I will be live tomorrow at 1 Eastern, noon Central, covering all of tomorrow's news. Make sure, uh, as a birthday gift to me, wherever you're watching, make sure you follow or subscribe to the channel. And then if you're on Rumble, go follow Melanie Mack's channel. She's up to 6.35 thousand subscribers now. She uploads her content there regularly. If you're on YouTube, please follow Melanie Mack Go Boom. All these links are in the description. Before you log off for the night, wherever you are, Please do uh, follow and support her stuff. She'll be back with us on. You know, I just thought we could actually do Tuesday IRL. Oh, I thought you were leaving on Tuesday. I don't leave till Wednesday, I guess. Oh, so we could do Tuesday IRL. Yeah, we'll see how the logistics work. But we could okay. hypothetically, we could hypothetically be in the same room on Tuesday. Okay. Doing the show. So it's. It's uh I just popped in my head. I thought I was leaving on Tuesday, but I actually leave Wednesday. So God we'll it. see. Yeah, we'll see. Okay. Uh, I usually get a lot of anxiety when I travel. So the day before I travel, like I might just be like oh, sitting in my hotel room, like just... <laughs> we'll, we'll be remote, even though you'll be across the street kind of thing. But right. <laughs> the um we'll see how that goes. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Thanks for all your support. Um, thanks for your um uh all of your rumble rants or super chats. Those go help support the support the show and um thanks so much and uh we'll see you tomorrow